welcome, welcome. I hope you had a wonderful week. Uh, in today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to build a Python app using Plotly and Dash that has a stock market alert system, sending emails and uh, phone messages to other people or yourself. So this app that we're going to build together allows the app user to choose um, stock market uh, ticker. Let's choose, for example, Meta. It will update the price update the time live every 10 seconds and also show uh, hist um, a line chart going three months back with the uh, stock, stock price history. It will also give this section right here to the app user uh, where the app user can change um, whether they want to receive uh, email alerts or phone alerts with the um, once a certain price threshold is passed. So let's put this at 80 and we'll put email alerts and we can go to the email that we're sending to the user which will be in this case a fake email address right here and we can see meta passed um, your threshold of eighty dollars and is now at 172 right because the share price is 172 and the user wanted an alert when it's over 80. so we're going to build all of this together and the best way to do that is to go into the github code which is this go into the code itself right here this is going to be under the video download it put it on your computer and follow along all right okay so here's the code first we're going to import all the libraries that we need if you don't have some of these libraries installed you will have to do pip install pandas pip install dash and pip install fmp python this will allow you to connect to the api of fmp and get the stock market price and the historical historical prices we're going to read this csv sheet this is just a ticker list that we're using for the drop down so all this list comes from this online uh, csv sheet that i have on github these are only technical stocks. So if you want stocks uh, from, from, uh, that are different, you'll have to use a different Excel sheet or a different list. Now, we're going to build this function together. This function that's from uh, Clarity Coders on YouTube uh, allows you to send alerts to other people's email addresses or phones or yourself, right? But we're going to have to update these two things and i built this sheet for you that is going to be under the video as well showing you how to set up this um this alert system allowing you to send emails and phone uh, sms messages from your gmail account so let's do this together the first thing you need to do is go to http my account google right here and then you need to step to verification click on that so security step to verification we're going to activate that get started and here we're going to activate the um, uh, two-step verification here I'm using my phone number so let's see what the code was this is tied to my phone okay next and then we have it turned on perfect that should work and now we go back and now we go into uh, select app choose other customer names so we go to security tab and app passwords security tab app passwords and here under the select app I'm sure close this so we don't kill the API so here under the app passwords, we have to do select app and choose other. So we'll go into select app. We'll choose other custom name. We'll just say, we'll call it email alerts. You can call it anything you want. Generate and you get this password. Copy this password. Copy this password and replace it with the original password on line 21. So we'll go right here, which is right this password line 21. So that is it. One second. Let's put it right here. Okay. So we replaced it. 
And now we also need to replace the user is my tutorial email two. This is the email that I use to set everything up right here. You see, this is um, tutorial email two. This is my email address. And now that we have everything set up, we can see that it works. We can make sure that it works because I'll do, I'll run this. We'll change it to, I don't know, let's change it to Amazon. Amazon is at 197. Let's change this to 89. Email alerts. And let's see that I'm sending this email. I'm activating this function down here. We'll go over this later, right here. And we're sending it to tutorial email only to my other email address right here. And you can see Amazon passed your alert threshold of $80. $80, is that what we put? $89. So where is that? Make sure it's $89. 80, 80, $89. Amazon passed your uh, last threshold of 89 because it's at 97.2 right now, All right? Okay, so we know that it works. We know that this function works. So now let's build the app. First, we're gonna put things inside the layout. We want to control the, the, how the app looks, and then we're gonna create this uh, callback that triggers everything, connects every uh, the drop down to the, to the graph, and creates that send these alerts so first the layout right here line 32 to 44 you can see here that it's pretty simple the title is right here the HTML h1 title and then we have the drop down with all the tickers this is the drop down with all the tickers we have here a hidden element this is just an interval and this will trigger every 10 seconds if you want to change it to 20 seconds just do 20 or 30, but this will trigger every 10 seconds. We're going to use this to actually trigger uh, the callback, to trigger the app every 10 seconds. And then placeholder right here, we're going to put this information, this HTML uh, div is gonna go right in here. It's empty for now. And inside this empty graph, uh, we're going to use uh, the callback to actually put this line chart and then horizontal line. And then underneath, we have two divs, just two sentences you can see here. What would you like to set up? Email, alert. And then we have the radio items with all these, all these options that you can see here. No, yes, yes, phone, and the input button, right? From zero to 1000, and you can choose, you can choose any value you want or just write it. All right, so we have the layout. Now we need the callback to create this interactivity and connect everything and, and send these alerts. So in this case, we have four different arguments, right? Two inputs and two states. These are four arguments that go into the callback function. The first one is the end interval. It's this right here. And the end interval is a component property of the trigger of, of this, of the DCC interval. The n interval is uh, counts how many times the interval has been triggered. So the first 10 seconds, one time, after 20 seconds, two times, three times, four, five. So this updates every 10 seconds. And then ticker name, you can see here is the, is the second input. So it's value of ticker name, which is the dropdown, right? It's the value of the dropdown. So when you first start the app, it's Tesla, but then every time you change the dropdown, this will, this will change as well. It's just a string. And these two are inputs, right? So that means these two things are going to trigger the callback. They're gonna execute the callback and return something. So will, the callback will execute every 10 seconds or if the dropdown changes, the ticker name changes to something else. And whenever it does trigger, we're going to take the FMP class, right? We import it here. We're going to uh, download data in the pandas format, and we have to connect our API. 
And this is my API that I will obviously change after the video. And to connect to the API, you just go in here. I'll put this link under the video as well. Go into home, go into developers, go into your dashboard. I mean, you'll have to create your account, but that's very easy. I just use my Google account. And I put like a free plan. You're um, uh, limited to amount of calls. So don't make too many calls on a free plan. And this is the API key. F all the way to eight, F all the way to eight. So I'm connecting to the API and then I'm actually going to use these methods, these two methods on FMP to get some stock stock data. So this is the get quote short and this is get historical chart. This comes from here also, uh, the GitHub um, package. Uh, that belongs to FMP on, that I'll put under the video. You see there's different types of, you can get historical prices, get historical chart. It's just examples. You can, you can get quote short, you can get, get index quote. So there are a few things that, that you can get. So we're just going to use these two like that. So after I get all of this, including the current time, we're going to skip this for now. This is for the email alerts, the radio buttons and the inputs. Um, and we're going to go right here. We take the, we're going to build a Plotly Express line chart, take the stock history. This is a stock history, the historical data that we pulled from the, from the API. I'm going three months back, we take the stock history and we build a line chart. The X axis is the date and the Y axis is the um, high price. Uh, for that day, for that hour. And then we return this uh, graph or this figure line chart inside the first component property of the first output, right? This is the first object that we return, returns into the figure of the line history. What's the line history? It's right here, like I told you, the figure like that. So this is what's happening. It's returning it inside here. And the second object is this sentence and this sentence HTML PRE is returned to the children component property of this. Now what is this? This is the div. So it returns right here like that HTML pre it's interactive. And what is this sentence? As you can, you can tell right now, right here on the, on the screen, this is uh, the current time. And this is the current price for that time. It's just a stock, stock dot price. It's the price column and the first cell from that price column, which I don't think it matters. You can print this out. I think there's only one, one cell. So this is the price. This is the weekend. So this price is not updating, but during the week, every 10 seconds, this price will actually update because it's connecting to the real uh, um, stock market uh, data. All right, so we returned all of this. Now, we also want to um, activate this email um, uh, alert system. Now, this email alert system is activated in these lines from 61 to 73. So what we're doing here is we are, for this, we need the alert permission and the alert value. You can call this whatever you want. These are two arguments that refer to the value of the alert permission. And what is that? Alert permission, value of alert permission is this, is the radio button, right? This radio button right here. Initial value is no, but whenever somebody changes this value to yes email or yes something else, this value, this value would change, right? It's a different string. So the user chooses this, and this will equal yes email alerts, yes email alerts which means that if alert permission equals yes email alerts, this will be activated, all right? So this is activated if the stock price from, from the API is higher or equal to the alert value. The alert value is this right here, which is this value that belongs to the input. So in essence, it's this, right? So if the alert, if the stock price is higher than this value, if it's 997, 
for Amazon is higher than this value, right? It passed the threshold. And now the user wants an email, wants to be notified so they can buy stock or sell stock or whatever. So then it's going to send, send this alert, right? And this alert again is that the function from right here, right? The send alert where we have subject, body, and two. So we have here subject alert by stock. And that's why you see here uh, the subject. Let's go to one of these alert by stock. And you're also going to see the body of the email, the content, ticker name, pass your threshold, blah, 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 the content. And then you have to put the to, right? Who is it going to? And we're sending it to tutorial email only. We can actually send it to ourselves if we want. Let's send this to our own email address that we use to um, to create the, the alert system. Renew, and we'll say send. Tesla is 208. Let's send, I don't know, to tell is, how much is tell? 131. So if it's above 120, send me an email alert. And now we should go back in there and we'll go with sending it to tutorial email too. And we'll see refresh and a couple of seconds buy stock, tell past your alert threshold of 120 and is now 131. Buy stock, buy stock or die. All right, so we know that it works. Cool. This is for email. If the user chose phone alerts right here, a phone alert, then it will do exactly the same thing like we did here. All of this is exactly the same as this. It will check if the stock price is over the alert value and it will activate the send alert function. But instead, instead of the email address, we put this right here. Now this depends on on the phone carrier, right? So this, you need to know what the phone carrier is for that person. And for that, I built this document for you, I built a second section. You need to go to the website below to see the SMS domain. So we'll go here and you'll see that uh, I know that my phone is a Verizon. So Verizon, you need to do number at vtext.com. So then you go here you actually need to do uh, number vtx.com and then you put the phone number here. I'm sending this to myself. That's a Verizon phone. So I'll put the phone number, whatever it is, blah, 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 and it would work. But if you want to send this to a different user, you need to know the user's, um, the user's phone uh, carrier and it will send it to that user with that phone number. And you can see that it worked because I have here on my phone let me show you and see it says here buy stock Tesla passed your alert threshold of 45 and so on and so on from this email address above right um, so that's the only trick you need to know what's the what's the phone carrier so it's easier to send yourself SMS than to send other people if you have any questions uh, definitely in the comments below the video um, let me know what you think. Let me know if you build something similar and uh, I'm happy you learned something new. Uh, always remember we're better together. So help each other out. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel or if you want to support the education that I provide, you can become a YouTube uh, a member or a patron member as well. Links above. Thank you so much. Have a good day.